if you drive, you might have noticed that your car insurance is going up recently, and it's largely because of the soaring number of claims for whiplash. Motoring organisations say because the symptoms are hard to prove, insurers are paying out far too easily. Well, now ministers have been meeting to discuss how to end the compensation culture. Britain has been called the whiplash capital of Europe, with 1,500 claims being made every single day. And although the number of road accidents has fallen by nearly a quarter in the last five years, the number of whiplash claims has soared up 70%. It's estimated that false claims cost the industry billions and add an extra £90 a year to drivers' premiums. Now the Department for Transport wants to reverse that trend. At a meeting in Whitehall today, it's considering a number of changes, including stopping claims from cars travelling at less than 10 miles per hour, introducing an independent medical panel to assess claims, and changing the rules for no-win, no-fee claims. But will that be enough to end the compensation culture? Well, I'm joined in the studio now by the Transport Secretary, Justin Greening, who chaired that meeting today, and also Kelson Chorley from the British Osteopathic Association joins me too. Great to have you both in the studio tonight. Uh, Justin, let's start with you. So road accidents going down, but nevertheless, our um, insurance premiums are going up. Who's to blame here? Well, it's, it's partly the high legal costs within the insurance industry itself. We've had actually two meetings with the insurance industry, one back in February, where we talked initially about what we could do to tackle whiplash. Um, we've now already taken steps as a government. We've banned referral fees, which is how many of the claim management companies get their information. We've already taken action on the no win, no fee legal system too. And we were talking with them today about some of the, the rest of the things we can do on Whitlash, but also how we can particularly help young drivers. They face some of the highest premiums in, in our country, and if we can do stuff to help them too, that would be great. But is it clear what proportion of these Whitlash claims are false? Well, we know that many of them are. I think it's also fair to say. How many? Do you, do you have an, a, an exact amount? The total cost of Whitlash uh, to the industry, which gets passed on to motion, is £2 billion. Pounds. The industry is confident that actually a large proportion of that actually could be managed down through a more efficient industry but also getting rid of some of these fraudulent claims. One of the challenges is, as you say, making sure we get the medical study right and we're looking at having independent medical experts to help us do that. Because the danger, isn't it, Justine, that you're tarring everyone with the same brush and you're actually trivialising what can be very serious and painful injuries. So that's one of the reasons why we have to be very careful how we've approached this, to make sure we absolutely strike that balance right. This isn't about stopping people who've got genuine injuries claiming we absolutely need to have a system that means they can do that. It is about making sure that those frivolous and, and fraudulent claim, claims that push all of our premiums up do get tackled. Justin, let's talk to you now because you're the, the spine expert here. Just, just explain briefly, if you can, what exactly whiplash is. Mm, no, I just comment on Justin's uh, point about uh, sure. the right and, and, and appropriate people to ma help manage these conditions because that is important. Whiplash is a condition where you're involved in a car incident and your neck or upper back is being thrown into a, a forward and backward bend or a sideways movement even, and it's been done at speed and it causes stress and strain to the, the neck, um, the throat, the upper back, maybe your shoulders and so on, and it causes strain and injury to the muscles, the ligaments. And the okay, and we've got some footage of a, a car crash, it looks very dramatic, it has been uh, slowed down though. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at that now, if you can see that, Justin. What kind of injury could be sustained from that? That particular accident, do you think? And what happens to the neck and spine as you can see that dummy being pushed forward? Mm -hmm. Well, what you're going to get in a situation like this is uh, a patient coming to a clinic, uh, seeing an osteopath. We're going to find those patients coming in with a fairly classic set of symptoms. They're going to have headaches, they're going to have perhaps fatigue, they're going to have uh, pain in the neck, pain in their upper body, maybe some symptoms in their arms. These are the common Lots of symptoms see. there, but the, how, symptoms. how hard is it to prove? Yep, yeah, that's whiplash, and it's because of the accident you were in two days ago. Well, very often in the very acute stage, those people who have had a fairly acute form of whiplash, they're going to go off and see their, um, their GV, or they're going to go to the A and E and have an X ray and be properly assessed. Following that, several weeks, two or three weeks later, that's when you'll find the symptoms very often start to appear. Then they'll come in to see someone like an osteopath and we'll take a history and we'll match up this pattern of symptoms with a history of an incident. And that's the problem, is it, Justin Greening? I mean, it's not exactly, it's not a broken leg that you can tell straight away. It's something that could happen over two or three weeks. It's going to be very hard to, to crack down on this, isn't it? Well, we, we think we can strike that right balance. Uh, a typical insurance premium at the moment is just over £400. About £90 of that is covering 
whiplash claims. We also know that you know, Britain is the whiplash capital of Europe, so we've got a particularly high rate of people who claim on whiplash. And I think even when I've done media earlier today, the number of uh, responses we've had from people saying, well, actually, I know somebody who claimed they were probably absolutely fine. Uh, just briefly, the AA accused you've already taken too long to sort this problem out. So what kind of timescales are you working towards? When can we see our premiums going down because of what you're doing? Well, we, we are cracking on. We've already passed uh, a bill in Parliament that will start to ban referral fees, get rid of this no-win, no-fee uh, system, or, or certainly amend it. So next probably. Year? April 2013, many of these measures will come in and we've talked with the Institute today about further steps that we can take 